you, Dr. Nancy Taylor. Okay, I've got to do a two-fisted thing here today, and I'm not coordinated, so bear with me. Uh, as you've just heard, psychologist and psychoanalyst. So I'm going to tell you a little story, kind of about my life. Let's see. Okay, so there was a young girl, that is moi, in Philadelphia, and uh, some people call it the city of brotherly love. If you've ever been there, you know that this is tongue-in-cheek, because it's really a very kind of dangerous area, or at least it was, <laughs> parts of it. So I grew up in an area called North Philly, and there was a street sort of like this, uh, where I would go shopping. It was an Italian neighborhood. As it turns out, my father, I lived in a row house, my uh, dad was Italian-American, my mother Scotch-Irish and English, and so I got a dose of two cultures from the very beginning, and I pretty quickly learned that there was more than one way to look at things and to be. So, as a little girl, I grew up loving Gino steaks. You guys ever heard of Philly cheese steaks? Whoa. Oh, yeah. And uh, this is Alfred's Alley, but even now, I live in a house that remarkably has brick on the outside and looks very similar to this. And to this day, I'm somebody who loves snow. And that, I'm sure, is because of all the fun days when school was canceled and I got to go sledding. This is me with my dad in Atlantic City, the great place back east. And even when I was a little girl, I could show you pictures of me later with a bunch of gals dancing on stage. So I started pretty young doing that stuff. Whoa, okay, so now I want to tell you how it is that I became a psychologist. So these two people, they're this age now, actually my uncle Chicky, my Aunt Rose, has passed on, and this is Lucrezia, who is like his sister-in-law, and she's uh, still alive and with us. So when I was a little kid, the first thing that happened is my dad had a friend who was a psychiatrist, and when I asked what he did, somehow I came away with the idea that he could read minds, and I thought this would be very handy. So I think at that moment was the idea to become a psychologist. But if I look further, Whoa, hang on a sec. If I look a little further in my life, it really comes down to these two when they were in their late teens and he was in his early 20s. My uncle had just gotten married and they were moving some bedroom furniture around and my aunt and uncle were doing it together and I was alone in the house with them and all of a sudden they got in a fight, which wasn't unusual, and started yelling at each other and what I remember is my uncle Chicky had a mattress and he was squeezing my Aunt Rose up against the wall. I was absolutely sure he was going to kill her. So I went running down the street to Via Lucrezia's house and Gumare, which means Godmother Pompilia. Gumare Pompilia, Gumare Pompilia. I spoke Italian first. You have to help me, Uncle Chicky's going to kill Aunt Rosie. He's going to kill her. They marched me in the house, up the stairs, into the bathroom, pulled down my pants, sat me on the toilet, and said, Fa pipi, menzi, ti senti meglio. Go potty, Nancy, you'll feel much better. <laughs> I think at that moment I really decided I was surrounded by totally crazy people, and that was the beginning. <laughs> so let me just tell you here, you have some flyers there on your table. I, this idea has been brewing of what I wanted to talk to you about for about a month, and so um, I gave this handout out the day that we all got shuffled to that other restaurant, and it talks about psychological flexibility. So psychological flexibility is important. It's kind of the newest thing, especially in behavior management for our organizational management. We know through studies that people who are high in psychological flexibility, see every time I move this moves, who are high in psychological flexibility are able to be more innovative in their job, they're able to be more productive and generally happy in their lives. So this is something you want to have. So are you afraid of your feelings? Do you find that when you, you feel like you're going to have a big feeling, do you do something quick to get rid of it? Or is it hard for you to stay in the moment? Are you always thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow? Or are you thinking about the past? Or do worries get in the way of your success? Do you find yourself thinking, but what if this happens? What if that happens? If you said yes to any of these, then to some degree, you're struggling with psychological inflexibility. So let me define what we have here. Uh, by the way, I want to say that, um, Dan, you were prescient because last week your presentation spoke very much directly to part of what psychological flexibility is, which is acceptance of whatever is happening in the moment. And the idea is whatever thoughts and feelings are going on in your mind, not trying to get rid of them, but taking them with you. So you see this picture here. 
He's got self-doubt, ugly demons, etc. But where is he going? In the value direction. So part of the work is helping people to define what it is you really care about. If you were to die tomorrow, what do you wish people would say your life is about? That's your value direction. So, psychological flexibility is the ability to adapt to the present regardless of your thoughts and feelings in your head. And the thoughts and feelings could be something like, I'm never going to be able to do this, or wow, I'm cool. And respond in the moment to the demands of the situations according to what you value. Okay? So get out of your head and get into doing what will take you in that moment in the direction that you really care about. Oh, often. Go back. Well, let me go on because I don't have a lot of time, unfortunately. I lost my... Uh... Working on it. <laughs> okay, so this idea of psychological flexibility, I'll just run through some things that I know are going to be up there. If I say to everyone, I want you to complete the sentence, blondes have more... Fun. Fun. We got that. Blondes have more fun, right? So let's try this one. Jack and the means not. Now I've cheated a little because I put it something here. No. But the reality is, do any of us really think there was a fellow named Jack and that he found magic beans? It made this huge stock up to a <laughs> Yes. <laughs> then you should see me. <laughs> this is what I, I have to say. So. <laughs> So think of all the stuff that's in your head. In my head is Philly cheesesteaks, Philadelphia snow, but what if in your head is, wow, I'm a loser, I'm never gonna be able to do that. You're not good enough, this isn't gonna happen. So I want you to think that sometimes language itself can turn into monsters in your heads and that causes you to be inflexible. So the bottom line is, Notice that all of us have ideas in our head based on where we've come from and things people have said to us. And if you let it, that stuff will get in your way. So what I'm saying is there is a way to get out of your head and into your life. So my wish for you is all a happily ever after. A good tip for me, I started working, um, training coaches in addition to other mental health professionals. A good tip for me is anybody who's either running a business or a coach who's interested in learning this, it all comes from something called acceptance and commitment therapy, and I would be more than happy to discuss it with you. I may be doing a class in a couple weeks. If anyone is interested, please contact me. My website is also on the flyers, and you can also uh, make a request through the website. Anybody got questions? Yeah. I do. Absolutely, yeah. I hate to say it, but those are always, you know, People are still going to be sad, but we find a way to help them cope with it. Because when you're very bereaved, it's very hard, like what we're talking about, to go forward. So you have to find a way to have those feelings and still do what you need to do. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you have any? Oh, Sarah? Yeah. I have a song playing for Dr. Nancy. She is a great psychologist. I went to her several times with different issues that I had. We confident, we, you know, I wasn't confident enough, and I was insecure, and I, when my father passed away, I had a lot of training problems, and she helped me a lot. And I referred her to school uh, in addition to that, and they were all happy with her. So, you know, anybody, uh, just for every day, two you need to tune yourself when you're spirit up in school to Dr. Nancy and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much, Dr. Taylor. That was really informative. Um, I love this flyer. I love, I love what you're saying. Are you afraid of feelings? Is it hard for you to stay in the moment? Do worries get in the way of your success? These are, in all the entrepreneurs that I've, that I've worked with, these are the top three things that limit su su uh, success. So this is something that Dr. Taylor is an expert on. If you're struggling in life, if you're struggling in your business, I would encourage you to talk with uh, Dr. Taylor. She's an expert at helping you in those, in those areas. Another round of applause for Dr. Taylor.